we got here a little bit of an old car. It's a 1998 Ford Mark 8. Um, it's been sitting in someone's garage for like five or six years, and they finally needed the car. You know what? This is the car of the people that just had that red Toyota here. The one I diagnosed that its uh, two cylinders are pretty much done for because it's, uh, you know, compression's getting past the intake valves. So this is their car. And because the Toyota is pretty much down, they had to pull this one out of the garage. It's been, like I said, sitting for five or six years. So they're trying to get it up and running. I mean, it already runs. Obviously, it drove here, uh, but it has absolutely no brakes. Uh, the pedal goes all the way to the floor. But if you look in the master cylinder, there's actually fluid inside of here. See that? Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead and change the master. We're going to start with that. Um, and then go forward with it. The whole bottom of this car is all rotted out. I could see it's already had some brake lines replaced. So after we do this, um, if it turns out there's a leak somewhere, we're going to have to take care of that also. Of course, since the car has been sitting forever, it's going to need new pads and rotors all the way around. You can see. And we do have new pads and rotors for it. But I want to go ahead and fix the issue with the brake pedal. I want to get pressure. Once we get pressure within the system and the pedal feels good, then I'm going to go ahead and change actual uh, pads and rotors. I got the master cylinder off of the car, as you can see. Don't you just love when you spend 45 minutes trying to break one of these things free, and at the end of the day, it just doesn't want to go, so you end up having to break the line. Now I have to, uh, you know, splice in a new line right here and make a new fitting and all that crap. Yeah literally about 45 minutes of heating this thing up to try to get it to expand to let go of the the steel line and it just wasn't going it wasn't happening like i said had i known it was going to end up just breaking like this i would have just cut it from the very beginning but you know hindsight is 2020 right uh yeah but that sucks uh it is what it is uh the first line right there came off pretty good and that's the one that i had to just cut my losses it was a big old waste of time trying to get it off. Anyway, we'll get it fixed. So I got the piece right here in the vise. And as you can see, I'm trying to knock uh, the line out with a punch. And it's starting to come out. But I've had to put a ton of heat to this thing. And I am giving it the beans with the hammer to punch that uh, that line out. There's no way in hell this was ever going to break free on the car. That, that line had to be cut in order to get this off. Because it, it was never going to uh, break its bond. If I'm having this hard of a time to just knock it out with a hammer. I am making progress. I just finished uh, making my flare on the line that's on the car. You can see that is a perfect flare. I absolutely love uh, the tool that I got from Eastwood, this thing. Um, so yeah, that came out perfect. And I already made the flare for this side that's going to go into the master. And all I have to do is line the lines up and cut the copper line so it fits uh, the correct length put the fitting on it and make the other flare to connect them using a union and that'll be it so i'll get you guys a finished shot once i'm done all right so i'm pretty much done with the brake line there it goes right there and uh you can see my now i'm sure some of you have noticed this kink in the line that i made that is right here and i can assure you that it's not a hard kink now at this point that I was making this line, I did not have a proper tube bending tool. So of course I have to do it by hand. But since this video, I have purchased a proper tool for bending brake lines. Uh, but I'm just putting this out there to let you guys know that that kink that you see is not a hard kink. And it is not obstructing any brake fluid. Connection right there. No worry, the line is not touching or rubbing on anything. Um, so now it's time to go ahead and fill up the system and start bleeding it. Now, the line's not perfect, but I know I did a solid job and it's gonna be safe as opposed to uh, this, look at these brake lines. Zip ties. See this? Yeah, so what I'm doing up here is just uh, it's like a professional job compared to the crap down there. So I'm still with this Lincoln Mark 8 and I'm still trying to get the brakes to work. The pedal just feels like, like nothing. Okay, like there's no pressure at all. So 
So anyways, I'm at the right rear side. Look at this. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, well, one thing at a time. I figured whatever was wrong with this car that doesn't allow the brakes to bleed out has to be at this wheel because I've already done something at all three wheels. This is the last one and we've seen it has a bad wheel bearing. And once you get the wheel off, look what I see here. That is a leaking brake caliper. So that's why I can't, even though I was bleeding at the front and I bled at the rear left side, I was still getting no pedal because of this. So we have a bad wheel bearing and it's most likely what took out the caliper because of you know the rotor is pressing so hard against it because the bearing is so bad or the caliper just went bad on its own and the bearing is just happens to be bad also either way it's going to need a new caliper and a new wheel bearing before i could do anything before i put on the new pads and rotors back here it's, it's going to need all this stuff so all right so we got the green light from the owner to go ahead and change the caliper and the wheel bearing so stopped at AutoZone. Get in the zone. Got Duralast bearing here and a Duralast caliper. Now I do have to return this caliper for a core charge. All right, so it's almost 10 p.m. <laughs> gotta stay motivated, all right? So I finally got the knuckle off. I mean, these two giant bolts with the big nuts on them, they were a pain in the ass to get off, uh, but they're off. And I got the retainer clip off of the wheel bearing. Now I'm actually gonna use my Astro wheel bearing press kit to get this out instead of taking it over to the press because I just I don't know I like doing this better I think it's uh, easier faster and sure as hell not as scary as using the press so <laughs> that thing scares the hell out of me like I said I got the retainer clip out now let's start pressing out this wheel bearing now I know what you're asking why didn't I do it on the car well this axle there's no way to get the axle out of the knuckle so you could use this tool or else I would have done that without removing the whole thing but it just isn't possible you have to remove the knuckle all right so it's moving along as you can see I got the old wheel bearing out it's right there now I'm just gonna go ahead clean everything and press in the new one so far taking out the wheel bearing has been the easiest part of this whole job all right so I got the new wheel bearing pressed in and I already have the retaining clip installed and it is locked in its groove now to just press on the hub Surprisingly, the hub came out without the race attached to it, as you can see, so that's really nice. I love when that happens, but it's not often. So I could go ahead, clean this up, and install it. Obviously not on this side. <laughs> Alright, so everything is all together, as you can see, and I'm not really too happy about this Duralast wheel bearing. Uh, usually they've been pretty decent, but something's wrong with this one. It's actually really tight. And no, I didn't crush the bearing by over-tightening it or anything like that. It's just, I mean, it spins. It's hard to do it one hand. You can see it spins. But to me, that it feels way too tight. I don't know. I'm just going to roll with it. There's nothing else I could do at this point. It's, it's late, and I'm not going to go ahead and tear that thing back apart again. Hopefully, hopefully it works out. If the, if the bearing ends up dying prematurely, well, at least it's from AutoZone, and it's got a warranty, right? Don't worry, it's under warranty. And now for the ABCs of mechanics work. <laughs> I know you're laughing, but it's got a it's got a jingle to it, okay? So whatever. Anyway, uh here's a pro tip. If uh if a nut and bolt fight you all the way off, when you finally get it off the car, don't go ahead and just slap it on like that. Take the time to what the hell was that? All right, man, I thought I saw a mouse or a rat or something. <laughs> Take the time to clean up the threads, okay? Uh, for example, this one right here, I have not done it yet. And as you can see, I can't move it, okay? This one, on the other hand, look at that. Clean up the threads. If it fights you coming off, it's going to fight you going back on. So clean up the threads, and it's gonna, just going to make your job a lot easier. Don't worry, this is going to get some thread locker when I put this back on. Okay, so I got everything together as you can see. And I'm using my vacuum pump to uh, 
suck the brake fluid out so I'm just gonna go ahead I've already been doing this maybe two or three times already I could hear the fluid coming out all right nice and snug all right so at this point now granted there was a leak here but at this point I already bled both front wheels and I bled the rear driver's side so now that we got this leak taken care of and I just finished bleeding it let's get in the car and fill the brakes now I'm sure I have more bleeding to do but just by fixing a problem right there we should feel some sort of improvement right so let's go ahead and check it now keep in mind this pedal went all the way to the floor like all the way as if like just straight up busted brake line okay like nothing at all actually before we put the key in oh i could already feel pressure and that's a good sign so i'm gonna do a quick start up not for too long since we're locked in the garage here oh yeah we got pressure doesn't go all the way down of course i still have more bleeding to do uh, now that we got the leak fixed but there's definitely pressure that's holding right there it's not falling all the way to the floor it's hard to see but that is not going all the way to the floor how it used to so i'm really happy with that uh that tells me that was the uh, last of the leaks and now we just gotta go ahead and i'm gonna bleed this side one more time and see how the brake pedal feels if i if i think it needs just a little bit more then i'll go ahead and bleed the front one more time but so far massive improvement and you know what it's uh what time is it? i think it's around 11 o'clock right now 11 p.m i'm hot i'm sticky i'm nasty but let me just go ahead and knock this out because i just want to get it over with i'm tired of seeing this car <laughs> And of course, the slide pins are stuck on the very last caliper bracket. <laughs> Just my luck. It is now 12 a.m. So moving along here. All right. So next thing I want to do is something I noticed is that the stabilizer bar is actually broken. You see it? It's supposed to be connected right there and all it's doing is hitting the exhaust and making noise so super annoying so i think what i'm going to do is just take off the stabilizer link as you can see to take the whole arm with it so off the car and you won't hear any more noise from this so two things number one as you can see i'm done with everything number two i just saved a whole lot of money on car insurance by switching to geico <laughs> no i'm joking all right, good night, guys. Uh, it's about 12.30. I'm going to go in, take a shower, get something to eat. <sighs> I done f***ed up. <laughs> uh, I broke the bolt for the caliper bracket. Snapped it right off. And yes, it was my fault because I had the impact gun on Titan instead of reverse. And I'm like, man, this thing down here tight. And I just kept wailing on it, not realizing I had it on tight. And that's what happened. So at this point, you get, I don't know if you could tell, but try drilling in. The problem is it was stuck in there to begin with, okay? So even without me snapping it, these things, both of these bolts were on here really tight. So once you snap the head off, the threads that are inside of here, it's pretty much done. You're not going to get that out at least. At least I'm not. I don't have the proper tools. I don't have a drill press. You know, I don't have a good welder. I, I tried, I tried like welding a nut on top of it, but with the Harbor Freight uh, welder, that thing, that thing can't even stick paper to paper with glue. Um, now the part's dirt cheap, and I'll pay. I'll pay for another one out of my pocket. It's not an issue. I'm the one who broke it. The problem is can't really get the part I checked the local stores around here and I can't get the part uh, so for the time being I pushed the car out of the garage so I could close the door without too many mosquitoes coming in here since it's it's already dark outside and I'm gonna keep trying to get this bolt out even though it's probably just a waste of time but I'm gonna keep trying 
Uh, yeah, right now I'm just kicking myself in the head for doing so something so stupid. I, I think this is the first time I've ever done this where I break a bolt because I had the, the gun going in the forward direction instead of the other way. <sighs> Today's not going well. This, this car is just bad luck for me. Everything's going sideways on it. And f yeah, it's only been an hour and a half, but it's starting to come out. Look at this bad boy all mangled up. But I'm at the point where I'm hitting it with the chisel right at the very edge of this piece of metal and just like slowly hammering it and it's twisting out. The way I was able to free, free it up is basically the air hammer. So I put my pointed bit on the air hammer and I hit it from this side and then I hit it from the back side no pun intended and I just kept doing that back and forth kept switching between the front and the back until I put a reversed thread uh, easy out I don't know what the heck they're called and then I noticed that the threads are starting to move so ever since then I've just been slowly tapping it and it's turning little by little so it is gonna come out and I'll keep you guys updated alright so I just about got it Wow, this took forever to get out. I want to say at least three hours. But it's out. The biggest problem we have now is to find a replacement bolt. So that's trash. Leave that there for now for it to pull off. Let's see if the threads are all mangled up. Look at that, perfect. Yes. So at this point, all we need is a bolt. All right, guys, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, it still sucks, but at least I was able to get the bolt out or the, the damaged bolt out. And now I have to look into finding a replacement bolt. But uh, I think this is a big achievement right here. Brakes on the right side of this uh, Lincoln are all put together. As you can see, I did find a bolt. It's a different bolt. It actually has a 18 millimeter head on it compared to the 15 original on top. But um, it works. It was a little bit longer, so I just had to cut it down. And yes, it's a strong bolt, so we don't have to worry about that. Last night I was searching for parts like on Lincoln website and a whole bunch of crap says discontinued or you just can't even get it. So that'll do. All right, so I decided to try to help this brake line. The window was hanging down pretty low. All I did is I grabbed a P-clip, as you can see, and I used a stainless steel sub-tapping screw and just kind of tapped it into the body right there. And what that does is, you remember how low the line was hanging? So it's really prone to getting snagged on things. So I just push the line up and using that clip, I'm able to hold the brake line out of the way um, I don't know who did this job previously, but as you can see, they got zip ties everywhere, and this is not going to cut it, guys. They should have had a more secure way of holding these lines, something along the lines of what I just did here. So, um, like I said, I didn't do any of this stuff down here, but just by fixing this one line that was hanging really low, I feel a lot better about this. Alright, so this Lincoln is all set. Taking it out for a test drive and the brakes feel great. Plenty of brake pressure. So I'm happy with it. Everything looks good. Everything feels good. And they can come pick this piece of crap up. Now it's here for a front, upper, and lower ball joints on both sides. So the upper ball joint is going to get a complete control arm and down here we're just going to replace the ball joint there's a ton of play in these things they go up and down left and right sideways it's like the willy wonka elevator so everything on the right side is uh put back together you can see there goes the lower ball joint some grease coming out of it that i put in there we have the new upper control arm with the new ball joint uh, and I'm already doing the driver's side which is significantly harder because the bolts for the upper control arm 
are a lot more difficult to get to especially that one down there but I did get the arm out and as you can see I'm in the process of fitting a new one in and there we go this side is pretty much all done up control arm is in lower ball joint is in uh, what I'm going to do now is put the wheels on the car and put the car on the ground so that we could get the uh, upper control arms at the level that they want to be and go ahead and tie in down the nuts that hold the upper control arm in place. Uh, it's freaking hot. Got my damp rag right here. Just using it to wipe the sweat and the dirt off of my body. When I worked at the body shop on these hot days, I would literally just walk around with a damp rag around my neck. Uh, it keeps my neck cool. And, you know prevent it from having sweat build up on it and whenever I did get sweat you have a damp rag hanging off your neck to clean yourself <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe myself down aka a whore bath all right so I made a mistake that cost me more time okay so the bolt that goes in here uh, that connects the upper control arm to the body now initially when I put this side together first I put everything together I put thread locker on that bolt and I was going to go ahead and tighten everything down and I realized, you know what, let me finish this side before I start tightening things down, you know, because I want to get the car on the ground, like I said. So I put the thread locker on it and now that I come back to it, I forgot all about the thread locker and guess what it did? Yep, the nut was stuck in place. So as soon as I hit it with the impact gun to try to tighten it, all it did was spin the entire bolt, which is right here. I got it going through this upper control arm. And the boat is supposed to have like a little wing coming off of it and that wing catches on something underneath the car on, on a piece of the body and it prevents the entire boat from spinning as you thread on the nut so I hope that makes sense but because they were now locked together because of the thread locker it started spinning the entire boat and as soon as that wing hit the body of the car it just completely sheared off just snapped off because you know it's old it's rust so at this point the bolt itself is a 14 millimeter but it's rounded off so it was gonna be hell to try to tighten this upper control arm up and if I did manage to get it tight the next person who has to remove this was is never gonna be able to remove it okay it, it would it would cause someone all kinds of hell so what I decided to do is I found a large castle nut it's actually a 24 millimeter and I just went ahead and put some weld inside of there and it's completely welded on now 100% that thing's not going anywhere so now this thing has a 24 millimeter uh, that someone could grab from the inside as they're trying to remove the nut from the outside of the car so I hope that makes sense and yes I already checked for clearance this is going to fit in there uh, without any problems it's not going to interfere with the strut assembly or anything um, yeah so it's just one of those things where I knew I could fix this right now and save someone, even possibly myself, a ton of trouble in the future. You know, instead of just, you know, sending it and leave it like that. No, I, I didn't feel right. It had to get fixed. So now there is a permanent 24 millimeter for someone to grab from the inside now. Just to show you guys, I was able to get the bolt in without any problems. The wheel is even still on the car. So here goes my 24. And here's the bolt back here right behind this uh, control arm. And right there, I got the 24 millimeter wrench on it and it's holding. And then, uh, you know, you could easily reach around on this side and tie in that nut right there. So, yeah, I feel a lot better about doing something about this instead of just sending it and then uh, creates all kinds of grief for someone in the future. Uh, that thing's that nut is never gonna break off of there a big old hefty 24 millimeter now to hold it in place done with this car everything is tightened down lug nuts are torqued down it's uh well as far as that job it's pretty much done uh another issue is two things i have to look at uh the owner said at like highway speeds like 60 70 miles per hour if he pushes the brake the car pulls to the right really hard and he said he always has to basically you gotta whenever you brake at high speed you gotta try to counteract it going to the right so you gotta try to compensate by turning the steering wheel to the left a little bit he said it's scary as hell um, and honestly replacing these ball joints and worn out suspension components uh, may 
be may have been contributing to all of that but i still have to take it out for a test drive myself and see if it's still present or if i even notice it now and then another issue is for some reason they think the car needs a heater core they even went out and bought a heater core now chances of me doing this is highly unlikely i've never done a heater core before um but i made them aware that it is not cheap to get that type of work done someone said that the heater core is no good right that it's leaking and blah 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 but here i am looking at the hoses and typically when heater cores are leaking and people bypass them you know they get two hoses uh to kind of connect the inlet and the outlet on the engine side and then they also they either block off the heater core or they just uh, again connect one hose to the inlet and the outlet to uh, connect them together but looking at all of this right here is close I mean it's hard to tell but to me it looks like it has the original hoses like coming from the cooling system into the heater core so and there's no problems with it overheating or anything like that and they, they have no complaints of antifreeze making its way into the cabin so I'm starting to suspect that this heater core is not busted. I think someone who didn't know what they were doing tried to diagnose it. They threw parts at the car. And you know, well, we, we changed the thermostat and we changed this and we changed that. Well, it has to be the heater core then. It might be one of those situations. I'm not really sure. I did take it out for a test drive last night and under like 70 miles per hour under hard braking i didn't feel the car pulling to the left or to the right or anything like that and maybe that has something to do with me changing out all those ball joints but i did notice a shake in the steering wheel and you could feel it even at low speeds and the faster you go the worse it gets that usually tells me there's something wrong with a rim or a tire or something like that because it's constantly there and the faster you go the worse it gets so all I did for now is I jacked up the front end, I started spinning uh, the wheels and the front driver's side seems like it's a little bit out of round. So I'm going to go ahead and put that tire or that wheel on the back side of the car and basically do a slight tire rotation and take it out for another test drive and see if it's, uh, if it's helping then I could confirm and tell the owner that uh, uh, to change the tires. So I think what's really going on here, the reason why it doesn't blow hot air is because we have a blend door actuator problem and I looked online real quickly and apparently it's behind all of this trim right here so this has to come out in order to get to it. The sucky part is I think from what I saw online the most you could do is jerry rig it to work uh, to go onto the hot side but you can't really replace a part because in order to replace the actuator the whole dash has to come out which is a, just a stupid stupid design. But it is what it is, so I'm gonna, basically I just wanna confirm this. I just wanna rule out that nothing is wrong with the heater core, even though I'm pretty sure nothing's wrong with the heater core. But I wanna be 100% sure, just like I tell the owner, no, it's just a blend or actuator. Unfortunately, the dash still has to come off to get that fixed. All right, so it's very apparent that someone's already been in here. Of course, it's a 98. Of course, someone's been in here before, right? You can see all, all the pieces of plastic, everything's broken, everything's snapped off, nothing's taken apart properly. But, you know, we got down to the blend door actuator. Also tell someone's been messing with this. That's exactly how I found it. So, I'm going to see if I could somehow manage to switch this to the hot side and see if we could get heat to come out. Alright, so we have heat. It turns out the actuator itself actually still works. You see the white tab right there? Let me get something to point at it. Uh, right there this piece of white plastic that's the uh, blender actuator inside of here and as I turn I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on the cold side you're gonna see it spin and there it goes you see it spinning back to the hot side oh this air is just burning my hand it's so hot right now okay so what I had to do is move this little arm back here and I pushed it all the way down and we started getting heat. Uh, so it's not the actual blender actuator that's bad. It's this actual housing and all this piece of plastic. It's all broken and cracked. So unfortunately to fix this, I mean all this stuff still has to come out to fix it. If he wants to leave it on the hot side, he can. You know, so that every time he turns on the air, 
because AC on this car doesn't work. So, you know, running your, your air during the summer makes no difference. So you might as well leave it on the hot side so that when winter comes, at least you have heat. Okay, so I'm back with this Lincoln Mark 8. Uh, it's here for the front stabilizer links and a front left wheel bearing. Okay, so as you can see, I have one of the links right here. It's the one from the right side and I've already gone ahead and changed it. And uh, obviously this side is all going to get done together. So here we have the new link that's going on and here's our new bearing. So this bearing right here, it's not the loudest bearing, but there's plenty of play and it's hard to do it one hand. But if I get both my hands on it and rock it back and forth, it makes a lot of noise and with the wheel on it, the whole thing just shakes back and forth. I'm out of breath. So uh, it looks like a pretty straightforward wheel bearing to change, so I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. Now with the nut out of the way, look at this, like butter. I love these type of wheel bearings. <laughs> forget that bolt in crap and really forget that press in crap, right? This is where it's at. You know, it's nice because it makes the job easy for me and also saves the customer money because this is way easier to do than other types so of course I get to lower my labor prices right so it's a win-win so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and we'll pop in the new wheel ring and torque everything down the spec and it seems like we have hit a wall all right look at the pickup ring for the ABS or the speed sensor see how it's not fully making contact supposed to be more like back here look at the original one you can see it's right at the very edge and this one is like pushed in maybe like a quarter inch so it's not completely lined up with the sensor and only so much of it is on the sensor I don't know that might be a problem that sucks just my luck right just when you think oh yeah this is gonna be easy just always gotta run into a freaking problem Alright, so here's what I came up with. This is actually a brand new tool that just came in yesterday. It's the uh, Astro Rotor and Drum Puller. Now, I didn't buy it for this, but obviously it works. <laughs> so my plan was to obviously pull the ring back so it comes in line with the sensor. And as you can see, I've already moved it back a good amount. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, remove the tool at this point and inspect it put it back on the car and see how close uh, this is to lining up with the sensor All right, so the new astro tool did its job uh, Sometimes you gotta think outside the box, right and uh, just try different things now It did help it line up a little bit better. You could see the ring is now More aligned with the sensor. It's not perfect, but I don't want to keep pushing it over past the edge right here uh, Because this ring is a press fit now by us moving it like this, is it going to cause any future problems with this ring potentially becoming loose? I don't know, maybe. Uh, but at that point, you know what, screw it, it's going to get a new wheel bearing because I pretty much made this work and we should not have to be dealing with this, especially a Timken bearing. You know, it's supposed to be a decent bearing. You know, it's not like we're putting on a value craft part from AutoZone. So, I mean, it sucks that we even had to do this, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change the stabilizer link, which is right here. It's a really weird design. And then I'll put everything back together. I got the link out, as you can see, and these things were extremely worn out. Ball joints completely loose on these things, on all of them. So they were making a ton of noise. Uh, I've gone ahead, I torqued down this nut already, and I sprayed the hub with the CRC corrosion inhibitor. And I'm uh, just going to pop on this link and then put everything back together. And there we go, it's all set. The only thing left is to uh, put the wheels on it, take it out for a test drive and see how uh, how this bad boy does. All right, so final update, I swear. <laughs> uh, just final test, got the wheel on it and the lug nuts all snug. And there's no more play. Wheel's nice and solid. Doesn't wobble anymore from the bad wheel bearing. So it's all set. All right, so I could already hear that the clunking up front from the stabilizer links is uh, all gone. And as I get up to some speed right here, I could also tell that we don't have a wheel bearing noise. So it seems like the 
this old Mark 8. It's gonna live to die another day. And that'll be it for this one.